let's get started. So, um, what's, what is uncertainty in practice? If you go to, uh, if you go to Wikipedia, the um, definition is that uh, uncertainty is a term used in uh, sub subtly different ways in a number of fields. Uh, including physics, philosophy, statistics, econo economics, finance, insurance, psychology, sociology, engineering, and information science. It applies to predictions of future events, to physical measurements that are already made, or to the unknown. So uh, uh, I think it's no wonder that, that there's a bit of confusion about what uh, uncertainty really is, because it's so, so broad that uh, it uh, contains... Uh, so many uh, aspects. And so we are trying to now focus on our specific uh, area. Slowly, little by little, we get there. And the next step is to give you some uh, further definitions, uh, still from Wikipedia. And, um, and what is done here is uh, actually distinguish between what uncertainty is and what risk, because there's also confusion about that terminology. People interchange these two things. And, and so, Uncertainty uh, is defined as the lack of certainty, which is very helpful, um, and a, a state of having limited knowledge where it is impossible to exactly describe the exi existing state, a future outcome, or more than one possible outcome. And then there are ways to measure the uncertainty. We, we won't go there. And risk is the, a state of uncertainty where some possible outcomes have an undesired effect of significant loss. So. Um, to many of you, probably these are just words. Uh, it's, it takes a while to, uh, think, I think, grasp these uh, concepts. Um, broadly, what we can say is that risk is a subset of uncertainty in the sense that you basically target the uncertainty that will lead to uh, specific outcomes that are more uh, dangerous or more uh, uh, you know, susceptible to your business. And, uh, so risk is application related, I would say, and uncertainty is more, is more generic. There's also confusion about what is uncertainty and what is error. Um, in my mind, many people uh, actually interchange the two terms when they are not really the same. Um, so uncertainty uh, is, uh, again, pretty broad, uh, whereas Error is, is a bit more specific, and, and, and uh, as, as it's written here, any variable is subject to some level of uncertainty. And this is just a consequence of not being able to measure, quantify anything exactly. Uh, so uncertainty cannot be avoided, but it can be reduced by using better procedures, uh, better ways to measure things, and so on. Um, and as an example, um, the uncertainty on a measurement is affected by the quality of the measuring instrument. As we see here, you know, you have several ways to measure a table. And you can do it with uh, an old tape measure like that or, or a high quality one. And you probably come with uh, different answers. And of course, you probably trust more the high quality. But the thing is that even with a high quality, you can repeat the measurement several times, and every time you get a slightly different answer. And so um, that, that, uh, what, what is uh, telling you, I mean, there's, there's obviously some uncertainty because you, you can't define precisely what the length of the table is, maybe because there are some worms inside the table that uh, dilate and uh, contract the table all the time just to annoy you, or because the, uh, you know, they, they, there's really uh, no specific way to uh, fix the tape measure at the same location every time. And so, of course, with the, the high quality, you get better measure, but you still get that uh, level of uncertainty. And so by improving uh, your instruments, uh, you can reduce the error, and, uh, and, 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 and therefore, you also get the better uncertainty. But the error, uh, is defined as uh, mistakes that can, in principle, be avoided. A measurement can be taken accurately, but erroneously. Um, so in, uh, there are categorization of, of, of errors, and they, uh, 
uh, I guess the most uh, accepted ones are this, uh, where you have three type of errors, you can have even more, but uh, let's just uh, say that this three, uh, one is human error, uh, just due to basic incompetence, uh, you don't know how to use a tape measure, uh, for example, so yeah, it, you, you don't place it in the right place and so on, so that, that's basic uh, things that, uh, you know, it can be uh, avoided easily. But there are also systematic error, uh, errors due to the poor, calibra poor calibration of uh, or zero point setting of instruments. And most of the time you don't know they, they, they are there. So you just have to trust what uh, the measurement that like the tape is telling you, for example. Uh, in principle, you'd have to go to the, uh, um, you know, the standard meter and, and check your tape measure against the standard meter and then work out that whether that's good or not and uh, whether there's any systematic error, that, but that takes too long. So you just trust that uh, your measure, measurement is, is well uh, calibrated, your instrument is well calibrated. And then you have instrument errors um, due to the misfunctioning or misuse of the instrument. Uh, uh, so misfunctioning, I think it's, it's, it's clear what it is. Mis misuse, I mean, uh, I, I inserted in this category also things like parallax error because uh, it's really down to how, how the uh, instrument is, is designed and if an instrument is designed in such a way that you can't access well what you're reading, then you get parallax errors and, and so on. So, so these are the uh, basic errors that constitute overall the error you're making in the measurement or in the quantification of what you are uh, trying to uh, work out. And this will basically uh, go into the pot of what uncertainty is. So uncertainty is generally broader than errors. Um, so you've got the errors, you want to uh, try to reduce these errors as much as possible, but then you still have some uncertainty. And, and the uncertainty estimation needs to be uh, needs to be considered, uh, needs to consider all factors affecting the value of variable being assessed. And this may involve repeating the quantification of the variable many times. So it's the more you uh, measure something, uh, the better handle on uncertainty you have. Again, referring to the table, you just take that, the measurement of the table many times and every time you get different, slightly different value, hopefully very, very close to each other, but still you have uh, and we'll see another example of this measurement soon on a very uh, well-known quantity. So how do we tackle uncertainty? I would say then uh, uh, on, on this basis that uh, the leitmotif of the, uh, of the seminar is that uh, uh, the saying that uh, I have doubts or maybe not. So the way to tackle this uncertainty uh, is to look at the, what your decision-making process is. So I'm taking in this um, lecture, as an example, the um, you know, wind industry, uh, wind power in general. And, and, but this, the same logic can be applied to any other sector in uh, energy or indeed any other decision-making process. So the way I did this, there could be further ways to split the problem into. Um, there's probably a bit of bias on the meteorological side where there's more breakdown on the meteorological side than in the, in the decision making. But uh, just think of, uh, of a general process here where uh, you, know, you start from uh, observations that are the key to the whole process. Uh, uh, without any observations, you don't go very far. Uh, and then you plug these uh, observations into a model or you at least compare the model with the observations uh, to check uh, that the model is reasonable. Uh, the model by itself wouldn't be very useful unless you compare it to something. And then you still, you still get problems even if you get a good, very good model. The, the model will normally be uh, a bit off uh, what the measurement says, so you probably need to do some calibration after, after that. And then uh, in the case of wind, you need to convert that uh, variable that is normally wind uh, speed out of the model and, uh, and get some wind power through uh, uh, like a wind power curve like that. And, uh, and then uh, based on the wind that you are expecting, you make the final decision on, 
whether to run a, a wind turbine or not. So each step of the way will, uh, will have its uncertainty. And the way to view this is, generally speaking, um, that the, you know, the uncertainty will propagate. Unless there are, by luck, some compensation of errors, I mean, it's fa fair to assume that the, uh, all these errors will propagate in such a way they will add each one to, to the other. And so you will start even with the best uh, measurements in the world, you start with some uh, error, and, and then when you get to the meteorological model, the error s will increase and so on until you get to a pretty large error there. So there's no actual quantification here, it's just, uh, just a concept, but uh, uh, generally speaking, that's, uh, that's the way it goes. And, uh, and, and so the, uh, you see the, the broadening obviously uh, resembles the increase in uh, uncertainty. It's like a chain reaction. So now we go through, uh, discuss a bit more closely what uncertainty is in each one of, of, of the steps here. As I said, I won't go into quantification of uncertainty, so by the end of the lecture, we won't know whether you know, this one contributes 10% or, or 50% or whatever, but, uh, but at least we know where to look and then we can quantify, and, and hopefully the lectures that come will shed some light on on the numbers that should be put against each of the steps uh, or similar steps. So let's start from observations. Um, as similar to the table before, uh, we have uh, a similar um, kind of uh, uncertainty, even in variables that are very, very well known and researched, like gravity. And uh, so you can see here that uh, as time goes on from 1600 to kind of present day, uh, you know, there's been a, a continuous reduction in the uncertainty of what gravity is. Um, you know, admittedly, the, uh, the error is, is very, very small. We're talking about, uh, you know, 10 to the minus 9 and uh, relative error. Uh, so, and, and, and it was 10 to minus 5 in 1600, so it was very good even then. So, uh, and, uh, you know, we'd be lucky to get any, anywhere near in uh, meteorology for... But this, but just just to tell you, you know, even uh, even gravity has its own uh, uncertainty, and and it needs to be quantified, possibly not by going to the P tower or Pisa, but um, then uh, uh, in specifically for meteorology, uh, you need to start looking at uh, first where you place your observations. So we had uh, uh, we did a study on uh, on wind. Uh, long-term uh, wind trends and, uh, in Australia. And, and, uh, and we were looking at uh, the location of, uh, of, of this wind um, where the measurements were made. And uh, because we noticed something uh, strange, for example, here we see that uh, we saw that uh, uh, you know, the black line is uh, the wind uh, speed at uh, two meter high. And, and the other one is at 10 meter high, then we couldn't figure out why, you know, they have different trends and one, uh, you know, one is going down and people were worried because, um, you know, the wind is going down and soon will disappear. So we'll, uh, they, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll be in a steady motion uh, for the, the earth. So, so we looked at this and we found out, uh, surprise, surprise, that in, uh, in this case, um, I mean, obviously this is specific to this place, but uh, there are the similar cases. Uh, you know, the, 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 wind, uh, the, the, uh, the monitoring station was actually in between hedges here. The hedges probably have grown above two meter and, uh, and no surprise that, uh, you know, the wind is going down. So um, there's starting from this little things, you need to really um, work out where you want to have the measurements and, uh, uh, and, and also that uh, it will be, uh, uh, accurate for, for uh, time to come. Other, other uh, problems we found were, were stations were put at the outskirts of town and then, uh, and, and then the, crown, uh, the town has grown over time and, then, uh, and therefore the, uh, you know, the, the, that instrument that was measuring something 10 years later is measuring something else. So yeah, you have to be aware of that. And also, um, it's the other 
big problem with measurement is, and the way they're used, is the representativeness error. So, for example, if you place, you've got a situation where you have a, like a hill here, um, and, uh, you know, it could be like uh, even 10 kilometers uh, apart, and you think, you know, well, I take a measurement here, and then I, I don't, I don't have a measurement there, but I assume that the, the measurement is valid there. That's a, that's a big mistake. Um, and so you really need to be uh, aware of this representativeness error, which happens all the time in meteorology because uh, setting up instruments is not uh, cheap and easy. And so you make use of uh, the, f the few, depending on what type of instruments, but the, uh, the sparse uh, network you have and, and try to uh, extrapolate that information to places where are uh, not really uh, represented by that uh, instrument. So uh, we move to the uncertainty in uh, meteorological models and um, I still have, uh, do I still have everything, uh, everyone with me or um, is there any question you want to ask at this stage, halfway through roughly? Everyone is happy and uh, following everything? That's good. Um, so uncertainty in meteorological models is, um, <clears throat> you know, there are various problems with models, uh, but still, you know, they're very useful tools. But uh, we need to be aware of uh, various limitations starting from, uh, you know, the, the approximations we have on the physical laws that describe the uh, dynamics and the thermodynamics of, uh, of the Earth system. And they need to be approximated because, you know, they, otherwise they'd be too complex for the model to deal with uh, for computers. Um, some of these uh, uh, processes are also parameterized, which introduces another level of uh, um, error or, or uncertainty. And, uh, and then there are issues with the initial conditions, uh, there, uh, which are basically constrained by the observations, again, going back to the problem of the representativeness error uh, and the way the available observations are used to start models. And there are problems with boundary conditions. Boundary conditions is very broad and it's, uh, you know, you get all sorts of problems with, uh, you know, what vegetation type you use and uh, also the orography you use and, uh, uh, you know, what, what's in the atmosphere, uh, the, the gases that you put, and all the rest. So it's very, very complex. And, uh, and so, the, uh, the, the, as you can imagine, the, you know, there are, there are so many sources of uh, errors that will uh, lead to uh, pretty large uncertainties. And then there is also the problem of the limited resolution, which is always limited. Is always, uh, resolution is always lower than you would like to. And, and it's both in time and space. So this is just an example to uh, show you what uh, uh, you get. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, if you run something at pretty low resolution, you have uh, uh, a map of wind that looks like that. But if you uh, run a model with, uh, regardless of whether it's good or not, you get this uh, much better structure. So, so the point is that uh, you know, if, if you're asked what uh, resource for wind in a specific location and you look at a place like here and you say, oh, there, there's not much, so I, don't, I, I won't bother with that location. But then you look at more closely at the higher resolution and you see that, that you get, uh, and, and this is a well-known thing, you, you need to have pretty high resolution in models to uh, be able to resolve things like wind and, and solar. So, um, so this, this is another big source of uncertainty. And then there is also the, um, uh, uncertainty in calibration, so that what uh, people tend to do is say, uh, I've got the, back to the instrument, uh, my measurement, uh, I've got that measurement and I now want to see how good the model is. And I try to compare that, in, that uh, measurement to the model and, and what you're really doing is that uh, you basically take a, a, a measurement that is done at uh, one single spot, which is almost infinitesimal compared to the size of the, uh, of the grid of the model, and, uh, and you compare it to the full uh, square in a model. So, it, you know, there, there's a lot, a lot of things going on in that square that uh, are not uh, seen by that instrument, and yet you're trying to, you know, relate one to another. So you can, you can, you can still do it, but you, you need to be aware that that uh, will introduce further uncertainty. And, uh, you know, there are various ways to uh, 
calibrate the model. So they, you know, depending on what type of errors you have, you can uh, you know change in the mean, change in the shape of the distribution. So, so you you obviously look at the, the compare the model over various cases over a long time as as, as many as you can, and so you build this uh, distribution function, and and then you try to match the distribution observed distribution with the uh, model distribution, and after that you can use the uh, corrected um, distribution to go further in your uh, decision making process. And we get to the transfer function, and normally you see this nice looking uh, transfer function for uh, uh, wind speed, but in practice what you have is uh, it's much more scattered uh, diagram. And, and, and again, you know, you, uh, obviously, uh, as you can see, that uh, you, know, you don't have a single, uh, just an individual line going through. So whatever, your wind speed will have different type of uh, power associated with it, and uh, which one you choose will determine you know, what the uh, Error, error you'll uh, get to the end. And finally, we have this uh, uh, uncertainty in final decision, and this is probably, uh, uh, it's not my area, but I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of complexity uh, involved in this, and I'm just scratching the surface, but uh, obviously, ultimately, you want to have that information to know whether, you know, you, you should let the turbines run uh, under severe weather conditions, uh, or you stop and service them for whatever reason. So um, the, the way to do this normally uh, in a very simplistic way, uh, but it's a good way to start, is to assess uh, the cost-benefit benefit ratios or whatever decision you're going to take. And this is uh, uh, referred, especially in meteorological community, by a cost-loss contingency table, whereby you uh, uh, just have two... Uh, uh, categories here, event, no event, so it's a, just a categorical, you have to set a threshold somewhere, which may be good or not, um, but you can also try different thresholds, but, and then you have action or no action, so for a certain event, uh, you'd have a cost associated and the loss associated, and then you have to work out, you know, what, whether you want to take action and, 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 and bear the cost or no action and and bear the losses, and depending on the size of the two, then uh, it could be better to do one or the other. And, uh, and this is just a way to show you how it, it, this is in, a, in a, like in an ensemble probabilistic way how you uh, you end up with uh, in uh, with the cost benefit uh, curve, and this gives you a relative value. And and so they are, you know, at the low cost loss ratios, you get uh, high relative values and so on. So it's uh, that tells you when it would be good to act or not when you go off this way, then probably it's uh, it too, too small a value and uh, you want, don't want to take actions. And, and just to, this is just to mention, uh, I'm not suggesting recommending any of these books because I don't know any of them, but I just uh, grab them off uh, Amazon and you just do a search, you come up with hundreds of books on uh, making decisions under uncertainty, so it's... Uh, it's certainly something that uh, people look into and uh, write about. So, you know, if you want to learn more, just uh, go on to Amazon or any other places. And, uh, and one uh, uh, out of all these books, this is something that I looked at uh, some time ago, and uh, decision-making, one, one uh, simplistic way to look at it is also to uh, create this uh, uh, decision tree which tells you, you know, um, again, going process by process from observations to meteorological model and so on, uh, what are the uh, bifurcations in the systems. And uh, you can do it by associating also probabilities. Like in this case, the circle is where you can uh, associate a probability and you, uh, you can say, you know, I want to use observations in 30% of the cases depending on what the conditions are and so on. And then you go to... Uh, in this case, uh, you use, it, you'll, uh, use observations and uh, favorable conditions, and then uh, here is uh, you know yes or no branch, and and so on, and and you end up with uh, uh, decision making at the end, which will give you a set of uh, uh, pricing depending on which way you went through. Uh, you get uh, that pricing, and uh, and you can decide whether you know you want to go through this branch or the other branch and get to. 
and and in the end, obviously, you have to um, you know make a an informed decision based on all the uncertainties you have in the system there. So some uh, final observations. Uh, uncertainty in meteorology and energy is uh, pervasive. Uh, so there's, uh, there's many sources of uncertainty, and uh, its assessment and quantification becomes more tractable by satisfactorily understanding the problem and breaking it down. Uh, however, expertise over a wide range of areas is often required um, from observations, meteorological models, calibration, transfer functions, operation and maintenance considerations. So there's no single expert, I would say, that can deal with all these things, and therefore assistance from specialists uh, should be sought. And um, there are plenty of frameworks, uh, frameworks for dealing with uh, multivariate uncertainty, and um, these issues will be explored further in the next lectures. Thank you. So do we have any questions at this stage? We have uh, very little time. I'm glad that it uh, was all clear. Oh, David. Yeah. I think it will with Richard. Right. I think maybe Richard is going to. I can't. Where is Richard? Yeah. Richard? Yeah. I don't see Richard. Anyway, yeah, hopefully we'll touch on that. But, yeah, it's a very good point. I mean, uh, the uh, bankability. I mean, in a sense, it's, uh, you know, it, it's something that uh, it's related to final decision. And, uh, you know, it's down to what probably you, in that case you want to, you constrain the problem because you want to target a specific uncertainty in your answer. And then you probably work your way, sorry, you work your way back and, and find out, you know, what do I need to get to that kind of uncertainty, and 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 you can, you know, uh, improve all the steps, all the steps in order to get there with that particular uncertainty. So um, yeah, again, I mean, it's 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 within this general framework of of splitting the problem down and trying to improve the uh, uncertainty as much as possible. I guess. Yes. Um, yeah, again, I think it's um, it's dependent on the problem, and uh, you know, in the case of bankability, the the, the 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 financiers will tell you, you know, I'm happy with this sort of uncertainty, so you can stop there uh, or push it more. But yeah, of course, uncertainty will always be there, and especially in a complex system like Earth uh, Earth science, you know, it's you never get rid of it, and uh, it will always be sizable, a um, few percent or. Uh, Something like, depending on again, I mean, it varies very much on what the answer, uh, question is, whether you're, you know, looking at long term or uh, um, just a short period or whatever. It's um, yeah, it's very hard to talk about uh, specific things, uh, but uh, yeah, the uncertainty will be there. Just a quick one, uh, David. Yeah. Yeah, well spotted. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to step uh, break that. Uh, but yeah, no. I mean, it's uh, um, it, it may be that uh, you reduce the uncertainty there. I haven't uh, thought too much about that. But it's it's just one. Uh, in, in in principle, I mean, the way to look at this: uh, any any process you add to the chain, you are uh, you'll uh, you'll increase uh, 
uncertainty somehow um, just because you are. Uh, but uh, it's, it's possible, yeah, that uh, calibrating you reduce uncertainty. It's a good point, yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I'm already over by three minutes, so I won't, don't want to steal any more time from uh, Laurent. And, um